I agree that we should kill Herod. Hello, hello, my name is Brandon Wheeler and welcome to my channel. I have straw in my mouth because I was in the army, had like heat stroke thing. So I can't talk right unless I bite down on something, that's why this. I, uh, this is a movie review and everything. Um, my mom wanted to go see this uh, movie, so we all went as a family to, because it's the first time, and I think the first movie we've all seen together since I get out of the army. <laughs> we've seen some, I've seen some movies with my mom or with my brother and stuff, but never as a whole family. So it's the first time I actually seen a movie all together. So it's like, okay, it's a little bit of a unique experience. Just a quick thing, if you want to know about my dad, my dad's in the VA nursing home because he has dementia, Alzheimer thing. So that's where he's been since 2017. But she wanted to see a little Christmas movie thing that was out. So we went and saw the best Christmas pageant ever or the worst Christmas pageant ever, depending on your point of view. <laughs> so that's what we went and saw. Now, this movie, what is this movie about? Well, uh... All I knew is this initially kind of made by the guy who made Chosen and everything like that, the Chosen series and stuff. But the movie itself is a woman telling the story of the best Christmas pageant ever that happened in her town or the worst Christmas pageant ever. Because there's a certain family of kids, the Herdmans, uh, six kids, and um, they're all, as it said in the movie, Sure, they're going to be going down to hell. <laughs> they, they basically said that. So all these kids are just like terrible kids and everything. And you have like the only two names I remember of the kids are like Imogene and Gladys. Although the way I looked up the thing about the movie afterwards, find out it's actually based on a book, a 1972 book. I was like, I didn't know that. It was based on a book. Okay. And it spelled to the girl's name as... I am as I am O G E N E, but I thought in the movie the way they were pronounced it sounded like Emma Jean, like Emma Jean, not Emojin, is what I'm thinking of what it is. But it's that's how you actually say Emma Jean, and I was like, I've never heard that pronounced that way before. I thought it was always pronounced Emojin or something like that. Never Emma Jean. So I learned a new spelling or a new saying of how to say that name. But but these kids are troublemakers. They're all over the place, causing fires, burning stuff down. The town's terrified of them. Though the only thing they probably did right was burn down this one old shed. That everyone's like, yeah, that shed needed to go. <laughs> it's like, what? As you can tell, the movie's a little bit of a comedy movie. But it's a Christian comedy movie centered around Christmas this time of year. Cool. So, but what happens in this movie? Well, considering, you know, some spoilers and everything. But seeing, considering it's based off a book and the book is over 50 years old, and it's like, okay, so I don't real feel bad about it, talking about it and everything. So the movie, as overall, is like, it's all right. I wish it, of course, since I know it's based on a book, and it's like, okay, so I have to be conscientious of how that works, but, so I can't, I have to think of it as an adaptation. I've never read the book or anything, but I'd have to kind of think of what to do with it. But the acting was fine and everything. The kids, you know, acted like kids and everything a lot of the kids look familiar and i was like where have i seen some of these kids before but it's fine i recognize one guy in it uh you know he was like oh yeah that's the guy from the chosen he played the centurion who's friends with matthew i was like i recognize him it took me a little moment i was like yeah that is him but um how does the movie go well again the whole town is against the mother because the original coordinator of this show the pageant that this town of emmanuel likes to uh hold it's their 75th anniversary. The show has to be super special. And the original coordinator broke both her legs, which is like, what an odd thing to happen. How do you break both? Either way. So the, the character's mother decides to take it over. And everything starts going well, but then the kids show up because even though they're a bunch of bullies, they hear from the, the main character's brother, like, oh yeah, I can get a whole bunch of ch snacks at church. And then... It really seems like the emotions are not really well fed. They get whatever they have. Yes, they steal a lot and everything, but it seems like they get, besides being cruel kids and everything, they're just trying to work with what they have and taking food. So they go to the church intending to have for food, but they end up um, they end up volunteering for the play, and everyone's too scared to necessarily say anything, so they do that. They become the main girl, the leader, the oldest one, but 
she might be the oldest, but she's the leader of the crew, but she becomes Mary, her brother becomes Joseph, the other ones play the wise men, and the youngest one, Gladys, is like four or five. She becomes <laughs> the angel of the Lord. Um... If for some reason, everyone's wondering, like, why would they take an interest in this? And even the main character's like, why would she take an interest in this? Main character's name's Beth. Why would they take an interest in this and everything? And it's subtle. Well, not subtle, but they show throughout the thing how they always like to watch the kids, the herdmen's like to watch movies. And you see Emojin. Emojin. Emma Jean. It's, it, it looks like it's Emojin, but it's Emma Jean. It's like Emma Jean. It's not Emojin. Anyway, Emma Jean... <laughs> really likes movies not because oh it's adventures and everything like that she wants to be an actress it seems she's looking at the movie posters kind of imagining herself in that role in a way like imagine like could i be a movie could i be an actress and everything because when they're at the library they're they they ask hope oh, i'm getting far ahead of myself but she's really interested in about movies and everything and the, and the question is like why well they kind of have beth not exactly twisting her arm, but taking her, having them go to the library. Again, we're, we're thinking, like, what period movie is this? I know it's old. I was thinking 80s, but now that I know it's written in the 70s, I'm like, okay, 70s, okay. But knowing the kids, they get to there because why do they go to the library? Well, their first rehearsal where they're assigning everything and stuff, the kids start asking a bunch of questions about the Christmas story. They're like, who's Herod? Who is this? Who is that? Herod was a bad guy? We should have killed him. <laughs> <laughs> like what <laughs> we should have done this we should have done that and everything even though their questions are like very outlandish at the same time it's actually very honest questions like well why did the innkeeper kick a pregnant woman with her baby out what what in the world is that that's not right and why would herod want to kill a baby the jerk we should kill herod and everything as much as these like outlandish things of the herdmans and stuff it actually get, made everyone pause and be like well the people were actually paying attention the mother and the daughter were like you know i actually never considered that about the story why did they it's making them see what the christmas story really is and everything and again when they get to the library the herdmans are actually trying to research which is something you know you do for roles they're trying to find bibles trying to find anything they can find on herod anything they could find on the christmas story mary and everything because when when they're at the church Imogene is looking at this picture of mary that they have holding the baby Jesus and she's really trying to imagine herself in that spot but she's like yeah I'm not pretty enough I'm not dirty enough I mean I'm too dirty or whatever for this role because she looks too pretty and everything I can't be that but I'm gonna be Mary I was like okay so and you can tell she really wanted to be an actress but she wants to make it right for whatever reason um so it seems like the whole town is against them and it the herdmans do eventually, they want to get out on their own. They're like, no, we're not going to join because everyone blames them for a fire that didn't happen and blames them for a whole bunch of things. But the da the daughter, Beth, she tries talking to them and they eventually come over. Everyone thinks the play is going to be the, a disaster. The pageant's going to be terrible. The kids are going to ruin everything. But it doesn't happen. In fact, it actually becomes the best pageant ever. The kids bring their own ham to replace the frankincense and myrrh because they didn't explain what the frankincense and myrrh because you know the frankincense is the anointing oil the myrrh is the things for burial the gold is for what you give to a king it's stuff you know prophetic and stuff that is actually used for you know biblical context and everything they didn't get into that which i wish they did but what the kids were given what they thought would be the best present ham which is sli slightly ironic considering they're you know they're supposed to be jews and pork is unclean and it's just like Kind of interesting, <laughs> but they were doing it out of the goodness. Well, goodness, you could say the heart. they were giving a gift what they thought would be the best. As well as the perfumes and everything, you know, give a child ham and everything. I was like, okay. And uh, Imogene was like burping the baby, which people were like, oh, why is she burping a baby? But she's holding a baby like what she would think you would hold a baby at, not like as a doll, just in the thing. She's actually holding a baby, what you would think as a baby. The little girl playing Gladys. <laughs> playing Gladys, she. She was just having a hoot. You could tell. She was just going like, hey! <laughs> she just got to be, like, kid, be loud as obnoxious as you can and be funny. And that's what the little girl did. And she did. She had to be her role. <laughs> but it was funny in that. that the, all the humor comes from the kids, on one hand being, the, you know, crazy antics. But at the same time, it's, you know, they're being kids, acting like kids. And you're like, okay. So, again, the acting is 
it's all right and everything, you know, what you can get from kids and stuff, but it's a little touching towards the pageant at the end because you see how Emma Jean really is touched by the Christmas story, how she is actually affected by it and everything, and how she seemingly wanted it to be real and wanted to be merry and everything, and how everyone's looking at it differently and stuff, and turned out everything was all right. And then they have this little thing at the end of the movie where they explain what happens with the Herdmans and stuff, how one actually becomes a pastor, uh, one Gladys becomes an air flight attendant. Em- Emma Jean did become an actress for a little bit. She got to be an actress, and now she runs the Christmas pageants at her brother's church with mother of like five kids. One's in and out of prison and everything, and it said, honestly, one out of six Herdmans isn't that bad. And it was like, who says that about something? A first person my brother was like, does that mean it was based on a true story? I'm like, no, that's what made me look it up. I was like, oh, it's based on a book. Okay, well, interesting. But Emma Jean. The kids, again, they're really depressed. No one really knows where their parents are. Seemingly, their mother works uh, multiple jobs. You never see her or anything. The father, we don't know anything about. But she's... The, Emma Jean's basically kind of raised the kids on their own. They're deprived. They don't really have much or anything. They live in a shack kind of of a house. So you just kind of... You do feel sorry for the kids. You think, oh, they deserve this. No, they, you do feel sorry for them. And that's what the mother was learning. Despite all the pressure from the town, the mother was trying to stay like, no, the kids need to stay and I want them to stay because of who you know what like you know yeah Jesus came for everyone including came for them that's the whole point is to redeem us all and everything so it was like all right interesting so overall the movie is good I'd say it's good like out of like a scale one to five I give three and everything it's not a overly hilarious film kids would probably think it's hilarious uh, it definitely does have some legitimately funny moments with the, how the kids are talking, especially the little girl, Gladys. It, that's always going to get a reaction. <laughs> so, but that's funny, you know, what it was. So I've not read the book. If you read the book, you could talk about it. Uh, as far as how the movie is, i say it's a little fun time to go watch and everything. So if you want to go watch it, go and enjoy a little Christmas movie and everything. This movie would what tickle that. <laughs> Just make sure you don't have... Don't don't give ham. <laughs> but what I wanted to talk about the depression thing, really the library is the pivotal kind of thing where you see some things behind who the Herdmans are in this case because you see Imogene saying we can be the actresses in the movies, the actors in the movies, they can be other people. They can ignore their miserable lives and pretend to be other people. Like, one of the boys, you know, because they're playing the wise men, and they're told the wise men are kings, which, not necessarily accurate, but, but, as a thing, told to being kings, the boy's like, I can be a king. And all the kids were like, we can be something important, we can be different than what we are, as well as miserable and dirty and everything, and it's just like, for me, actually, that part was the more interesting thing, because I like, you heard a little bit of what they really were about, and really trying to research and everything. And you see a little bit of the hurt that Emma Jean really has. She hides it. She absolutely tries hiding it. She's the tough cookie. She, No one can bother her. Everyone's the most scared of her. She's the leader and everything like that. But she's really a hurt person. She's lonely, depressed and everything. And she really wishes she didn't have the life she did. I mean, again, you don't know where the mother is. Though at the end, you know, with the movie and stuff, they said the kids found a community. And that everyone started embracing them, which is like, I like to think like, oh, okay, that's good. I hope then if that's the case, then maybe eventually with the kids going to church constantly every week and everything, maybe that would help the mother eventually. And they can help her, you know, get a new job and stuff. The kids would do better. Just things like that. That's what I think of anyway. That's what I hope for. At least for a continuation of the story and everything. Though I see that there's, there's like maybe two other books Something about the best Halloween ever and best school year ever. And I was like, don't know anything about those other ones. But I'll stick with the Christmas thing for now. But if you read the book, uh, let me know what you think about the book. And if you've seen the movie, what do you think about the movie? Do you enjoy it? Not enjoy it? Do you like it? It's an innocent movie enough. It's good. But we'll see you in the next one for another Christmas movie review. Whenever I get to it. See you in the next one. Goodbye.